Let's turn our attention for the south because as we speak, almost 20,000 migrants remain stranded in Colombia. Most are from Haiti and Cuba and many are waiting to enter Panama. Panama is a key channel for migrants, many of whom travel to Brazil or Chile first, you can see the map, uh, and then make their way north with Panama standing as the vital doorway between South and Central America. Erica Moines, Moines is Panama's foreign minister and joins us now from our studio in New York. Minister, thank you very much for joining us. I, I really would like to, to begin where my colleague, Matt Rivers, you heard there, where he took off. I mean, we saw the influx of migrants making their way to the United States. Give our viewers a, an idea what it looks like uh, at Panama's borders right now. Yes. Um this situation has been happening for months, and let's be clear, the, the phenomenon, the migration of extracontinentals and from the Caribbean has been happening for over a decade. But between last year and especially in January, we saw, we went from 800 that we were receiving in January to now we're receiving over 20,000. So we've been for months advocating to try to get attention, collaboration among all the states. There are states that are receiving, there are nations that are receiving these migrants, then there are the transit ones such as Panama, and then the destinations such as the U.S. And we need collaboration among all the key players here. We were able to convene the first ministerial high-level summit to address this very pressing issue. And from there, we were able to create sort of a roadmap establishing exactly who's receiving, how are they receiving, because at the end, this type of migration, uh, you could end that fairly fairly quickly and then deal with the originating cause. Um, Haiti, for instance, just less than two months ago got the first dose of vaccine, and, and you can see how much we need to do as a community, helping them at the originating cause, but also at the same time, we need to deal with the, the states that are receiving and encouraging them to come to the South and then make their way up to the U.S. Uh, the, the numbers, for instance, uh, for, through Panama just this year, 80,000 migrants have gone by. So what you're seeing right now in Texas, the 10 or 14,000, there are many more coming that, that way. And we can see from the, from the information we have from Colombia and other states towards the south that there are many more making their way up. How many of the minister are waiting? How many are waiting to cross the border then? How many are waiting in Panama to cross? Yeah, so we are, we are uh, constantly moving, but we've heard information from Colombia that there are over 14 to between 14 and 19,000 in Colombia now waiting mm -hmm. to transit to Panama and then make their way up to the U.S. And give us an idea of the challenges that you're facing at home as you deal with this influx. Like you said, you went from 800 to 20,000. Yeah, so Panama is the only country and the first country where they receive medical attention. So sometimes they've gone through three or four countries. And in Panama, it's the first time that somebody takes care of their health, makes sure that there's no COVID. If there is COVID, we quarantine them. For instance, we had a case of a girl with yellow fever that had gone through three countries already. And in Panama, it was the first time where it got detected and we were able to take care of her. We also feed them. We have a migration station that, that gives them shelter, temporary shelter, but we have a maximum capacity that we've prepared and we've completely surpassed that capacity. And in, in, in order to, to provide support for this type of migration, it needs to be controlled. So that's what we're, we're asking and we're, we're looking to partner with the U.S. and all our neighboring countries to make sure that this is something that we can manage and we control together. So you've surpassed capacity, capacity minister, but you know, Panama has been saying for a while now that the region needs to step up and needs to deal with the crisis. So what would you like to see? What action do you want to see from, from the United States and from other neighboring countries? The roadmap that we've developed with the help, we, we got every single immigration director, we sat them on the table, we also dealt with the attorney generals and fiscal, so we've sort of prepared all the various aspects which are key in, in the migration, but now it's a matter of political will. 
Um, when you have countries that have charters welcoming or, or encouraging migrants from Haiti, for instance, to come to the South, or when you have no visa requirements, or when you have certain uh, labor permits. So the, it's, it's not across the board the way that we're dealing with this migration. However, the effects and the consequences are felt throughout. So we need to truly collaborate and make sure that, that we have the same protocols so we can actually take care and have a controlled migration. Do you think, Minister, that, you know, the action that we have seen in the United States sending people back, uh, Haitians back, do you think that is helping at all? I, I think that right now it is key that we need to work together. Uh, the countries that are receiving them, the countries that are transit, and the destination. Not one single country can deal with this on its own. We need to all collaborate together and make sure that we're all doing our part. And we also need to take care of Haiti uh, and go and understand that the crisis that they're going through needs our attention and immediate help. Minister Erica Moynes, a Panamanian foreign minister, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us here on Quest Means Business. Thank you.